Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at multiplying fractions using the distributive property. It's kind of a complicated lesson, and it's a very specific lesson. So look at the question type that you see there, the negative one-third times the quantity of two-thirds minus one-fifth b. That's the type of question we are going to get to today. So we're multiplying fractions outside of parentheses times fractions inside and they have variables as well. We'll get to that. All right, let's get started. We'll be multiplying fractions first, then we'll talk about the, the multiplying variables, and then we'll talk about the distributive property. Those are the three things that we're going to look at, and all of them will have practice, so let's get into it. First off, when we're talking about multiplying fractions, this is what we're talking about. One way to write this out would be to write it out as um, our first question in green there, two-fifths times one-seventh. You could write it out as a fraction with the numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. You don't need to do this step. If you can do this in your head where you just multiply two times one, the numerator times numerator, and then five times seven, denominator times denominator, you can just write it out. And by the end of this mini lesson, we're going to be doing it that way. But for the first question, I'll go ahead and write it out like that. We multiply two times one and five times seven, and you get your final fraction. That's what multiplying fractions looks like. This is a necessary skill for what we're going to do moving forward. You'll need to know how to do this with numbers like the one below where we have a negative one-fourth times two-thirds. This one's more complicated for two reasons. Reason number one, there's a negative. You can kind of ignore the negative or you can think of it as it's a negative times a positive so your final answer is going to be negative. And then you can just do all the math like normal and add that negative at the end. All right, let me show you. I'll do it like that. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 3 is 12. So I get 2 over 12. The second reason this is complicated is because this fraction can be simplified. So we would simplify 2 twelfths down to 1 sixth, and we have to remember that it is a negative 1 sixth because, like I said at the beginning, it is a negative times a positive. So if that was really super complicated for you and you weren't able to follow along, please watch a video on multiplying fractions or a video on multiplying positive and negative fractions or simplifying fractions. I have videos for all of those, but we are going to move on to practice these types and then go on to something that's a step more complicated than this. So if this is blowing your mind already, you may need to go back to a prerequisite lesson. All right, time for you to practice. I want you to practice multiplying one-third times one-eighth and also negative two-fifths times negative three-quarters. Go ahead and do that. Pause the video. Come back when you've finished multiplying. Go. Welcome back. One-third times one-eighth is one times one. That's our numerator times numerator. That'll give us one. And three times eight on the bottom in our denominator will give us 24. It's positive times a positive gives you a positive answer. Done. Next one, negative two fifths times negative three quarters. It's a negative times a negative. So our final answer will be positive. So I can ignore those signs completely, which is wonderful. All right, I'm going to multiply top times top, two times three give me six, bottom times bottom, five times four gives me 20, and then I simplify six twentieths down to three tenths. I do that di by dividing both the top and bottom, both the numerator and denominator by two. Six divided by two is three, 20 divided by two is 10. Two would be my greatest common factor. That's my final answer. All right. Let's change this up and talk about variables for a second. If you have a variable in your question, like 4 fifths b times 1 ninth, the variable is the letter b, and when you have a variable in there and you're multiplying fractions, you just write the variable down at the end. Because really this is 4 over 5 times b 
times 1 over 9. So we're going to multiply those fractions and just sort of leave the b. So b kind of carries on with us. So it's numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and that b is going to stay at the end. That's it. So the variable doesn't actually make it much more complicated. 4 times 1 is 4, 5 times 9 is 45. Our final answer is 4 45ths b. And the b has to stay on the end just like that. Actually, we could put it up top if you wanted, but it's better to just leave it on the end there. All right. Next one, negative 1 sixth x times 2 over 7. It's a negative times a positive, so our final answer will be negative. And there we go. In this one here, notice what I did. I skipped that middle step. I just multiplied. 1 times 2 is 2. 6 times 7 is 42. I told you we'd get to that point, and so here we are. All right. So you're multiplying top times top, or numerator times numerator, and then denominator times denominator. And the reason that I skipped the step here, it also gives us space to simplify this fraction into lowest terms. There we go. Now it's time for you to practice. I have two multiplication questions there, one with a negative, one with uh, both positives. Both of them have variables. One of them you'll need to simplify, I believe. So go ahead and try that out. Hey, welcome back. Did you try it out? I've been told in the comments that nobody waits and tries it out. So you could be the person that does it. And leave a comment if you did actually stop and do the work, because congratulations, I will reply to your comment and let you know that you did a great job. All right, let's go ahead and multiply. We're going to multiply numerator times numerator, 2 times 1. That'll give us 2. Our denominator, 7 times 3, gives us 21. And then we have our y. It's a variable. It just carries through to the end. All right, that's our final answer. In the denominator, I skipped that middle step. I just did 5 times 2 is 10. 8 times 3 is 24. The a stays. It's a negative times a positive, so I'm going to leave my negative there. That would be my final answer, except the numbers 10 and 24 have a common factor of 2. So we can divide the top and bottom both by 2, <clears throat> leaving us with 5 over 12, or 5 twelfths a. And it will be negative. That is our final answer. All right, so we've done multiplying fractions. We've done multiplying fractions with variables. Now we're getting into the distributive property, these types of questions. I'm going to do the first one, the green question here on the left, just to show you the steps for multiplying with the distributive property. And then we'll move on to doing that with the fraction. So the way we multiply, we do the whatever's outside the parentheses gets multiplied times each term inside of the parentheses. 5 times 2, 10. Now we'll multiply 5 times 3x, which gives us 15x. 5 times 3 is 15. The x just comes along for the ride. It does mean 5 times 3 times x, but because you're multiplying times x, it's just going to stay right there. And that is our final answer. 10 and 15x are not, they're, they're called unlike terms. You can't join them together because you have 10 and then you've got 15x's. So you can't say I have 25x's, you only have 15x's and 10. So these terms can't be joined together. So this is the way we write our final answer. 10 plus 15x. All right. Now let's look at that when we're talking about fractions. We're going to do the same things. We're going to take this 2 thirds on the outside and multiply it times 2 thirds. I'm going to skip that initial middle step that I had written down um, in our previous slides. So I'm going to say 2 times 2 is 4 and 3 times 3 is 9. See what I did there? I multiplied the numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and I wrote it down. It's important that we get to this point in our multiplying of fractions. If you're not there yet, that's okay. You can definitely write it out. Write out the entire fraction multiplied. 
I just don't have space to do it on this slide. All right, now I'm going to multiply 2 thirds times 1 fifth B. To do that, I multiply my numerators 2 times 1, and then I multiply my denominators 3 times 5. That will give me 2 over 15, and the B remains. Because so remember, we're multiplying times B at the end. All right. It's just going to be right there. These are two unlike terms, so we can't join them together. They will remain separated by that addition sign, and you're good to go. That is your final simplified answer. I do want to give you some time to practice these because they are challenging. So go ahead and take a look. This one here, I've thrown in a bunch of negatives. Um, I will go through every single one of these questions showing you all the steps. So if you do get stuck, please just go ahead a little bit and watch how I do them. But go ahead and try it out first on your own. See what you get. Three, two, one, go. Again, if you did the question and you got it, I'm just so proud of you. I really am, even though I don't know you. All right, but you could tell me in the chat box that you did it and you got them right. And then I can tell you how proud I am of you in the chat. All right, let's look at this. Negative 3 quarters times 1 half. I'm going to multiply numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator. I am multiplying a negative times a positive. So I'll end up with negative 3 over 8. Now I'm going to multiply negative 3 quarters times 1 third. 3 times 1 gives me 3 in the numerator. 4 times 3 gives me 12 in the denominator. I had a negative times a positive, so I'm going to end up with another negative, negative 3 twelfths x. Now, you might have noticed something about this fraction, negative 3 over 12, and that's that it can be simplified. 3 over 12 can be simplified to 1 out of 1 over 4. Let me show you that again. 3 over 12 to 1 over 4. That is the final answer simplified to lowest terms. Let's look at question number two. I have a negative two seventh. I'm going to multiply it times three fifths. Two times three is six. Seven times five is 35. Negative times a positive gives me a negative. Now I'm going to multiply negative two sevenths times negative five sixths a. Now this is interesting. It's a negative times a negative, and that gives us a positive. I have 2 times 5 is 10 on the numerator, and 7 times 6 is 42 in the denominator. The a remains, and I will simplify 10 40 seconds. We can divide both of those numbers by 2. That's a common factor that will simplify this down to 5 20 firsts, or 5 over 21. That is my final simplified answer. Negative 6 35ths plus 5 21sts A. It's a complicated question. It's a little bit funky looking. So if you got to there, tell me in the chat box that you did it, and I will definitely let you know in the chat that I'm proud of you because that's awesome. That's really great work. All right, a couple things to remember. When you're multiplying fractions, it is straightforward. Top times top, bottom times bottom. It's the most straightforward thing you can do with fractions. Distributive property. When you multiply all of the parts, the outside number, first number times everything inside the parentheses, and when you're multiplying with variables, just write them down. Just write them down and kind of add them on to the end or multiply them onto the end. All right, I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.